Welcome everyone to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AJ 2021. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. We are excited to be running one of the industry's most important and largest hybrid tech events of the year with AWS and its ecosystem partners. We have two live sets, two remote studios. We've got over a hundred guests on the program and we're going to be talking about the next decade of cloud innovation. We are pleased to welcome back one of our alumni to the program, Rob Lee, the CTO of Peer Storage. Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to see you again, Lisa, and thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Likewise, and I was stalking you on LinkedIn. Looks like you've got a promotion since I last saw you. Congratulations thank you. on your appointment as CTO. No, thank you very much. Very excited, uh, very excited to be taking the reins and uh, for all the, all, all the great stuff that's ahead of us. A lot of great stuff, I'm sure. I also saw that once again, Pure has been named a leader in several Gartner Magic quadrants for primary storage, for distributed file storage and object storage. Lots of great things continuing to go on from the orange side. Let's talk about hybrid. We've seen so much transformation and acceleration in the last 20 plus months, but I'd love to see what you guys are seeing with respect to your customers and their Cl hybrid cloud strategies, what problems are they in this dynamic day and age, are they looking to solve? Yeah, absolutely. I think all in all, I think, um, you know, customers are definitely maturing in their uh, understanding and approach to all things around cloud. And I think when it comes to uh, their approach towards hybrid cloud, one of the things that we're seeing is that customers are really, uh, you know, focusing extra hard and just trying to make sure that they're making the best use of all their IT tools. And, and what that means is, you know, not just um, looking at hybrid cloud as a way to connect from uh, on-prem to the cloud, uh, but really being able to make use of uh, and, and make the most use out of each, uh, you know, each of the services and uh, capabilities of the environments that they're uh, operating in. And uh, so a lot of times that means um, you know, commonality in, in how they're operating, whether it's uh, on-premise or in cloud. Uh, it means the flexibility uh, that that commonality allows them uh, in, in terms of planning and optionality uh, to move uh, parts of their application or environments uh, between premise uh, and cloud. Um, you know, and, and I think overall, you know, we, we look at this as, um, you know, really a couple uh, specific forces that customers are looking for. One is, um, you know, I think they're, they're looking for ways to bring a lot more of the operating model and uh, what they're used to uh, in the cloud into their own data center. Uh, and at the same time, they're looking to be able to bridge um, more of how they operate uh, the applications they're, they're powering and, and running in their own uh, data centers today uh, and, and be able to bridge and bring those into the cloud environments. Uh, and then lastly, I'd say that, um, you know, as customers, I think, um, you know, today are, are kind of one foot in their more traditional application environments and the other foot uh, largely planted in uh, developing and building uh, some of their newer applications built on cloud native uh, technologies and architectures uh, uh, driven by containers and Kubernetes. Um, you know, a, a big focus area for customers, whether it's on-prem or in cloud or, or increasingly hybrid is, um, you know, supporting and enabling those cloud native uh, application development projects. And, and that's certainly an area that uh, you've seen pure focus in uh, as well. And so I think it's really those three things. Um, one is customers looking uh, for ways to bring more of the cloud uh, model uh, into their data center. Uh, two is uh, being able to bring more of what they're running in their data center uh, into the cloud today. Uh, and then three is, is building their new stuff uh, and, and increasingly planning to run that across uh, multiple environments, prem, cloud, and across clouds. So Rob, talk to me about where Pure fits in the hybrid cloud landscape that your customers are facing in this interesting time we're living in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're really focused on meeting customers' needs in all three of the areas that I just articulated. And, and so uh, this starts with bringing uh, more of the cloud operating model uh, into customers' data centers. And, you know, we start by focusing on, um, you know, uh, automation, um, simplicity of management, uh, delivering infrastructure as code, a lot of the attributes that customers are used to in uh, a cloud environment. In many ways, as you know, um, this is a natural evolution of where Pure has been all along. We, we started by bringing a lot of the consumer-like simplicity into our products and, and uh, enterprise data centers. And now we're just kind of expanding that uh, to bring more of the cloud simplicity in. Um, you know, we're also, this is an area where we're working with our, um, uh, our public cloud partners, such as AWS, in embracing um, their management models. And so you saw 
Um, you know, he saw us do this uh, as a storage launch partner for um, AWS Outposts, um, and, and that activity is uh, certainly continuing on. So, so customers that um, are looking for cloud-like management, whether uh, they want to build that uh, themselves and customize it to their needs, or whether they want whether they want to uh, simply use cloud providers' management planes and extend those onto their premise, um, have both options uh, to do that. Um, you know, we're also, as you know. Um, you know, uh, very committed to helping customers uh, be able to move or bridge their traditional applications from uh, their data center into uh, the public cloud environments uh, through products like Cloud Block Store. Uh, this is uh, an area where uh, we've helped uh, uh, numerous customers, um, you know, take the existing applications uh, and more importantly, the processes and how the environments are set up and run uh, that they're used to running in their data center um, production environments bridge those now into public cloud environments, and whether that's in AWS or in Microsoft uh, Azure as well. Um, and then thirdly, uh, with Portworx, right? This is where you know we're, we're really focused on helping uh, customers, not just uh, by providing them with the infrastructure they need to build their containerized cloud native applications on, uh, but then also marrying with that infrastructure, that storage infrastructure, um, the data flow um, operations such as backup, DR migration uh, that go along with, with that storage infrastructure, uh, as well as now application management capabilities, uh, which we recently announced uh, during our launch event in September with Portworx Data Services. Uh, so really a lot of activities uh, going on across the board, but I, I would say definitely focused uh, on those three key areas that we see customers um, really, really looking uh, to crack as they, um, I, I would say, balance uh, the cloud environment and, and their data center environments in this hybrid world. And I'm curious it, what you're seeing, you know, the, the focus being on data. Customers, uh, you know, definitely recognize that data is their lifeblood, is is kind of, um, you know, contains a lot of the, um, uh, you know, the, the value that they're looking to extract, whether it's in a competitive advantage, whether it's in better understanding their customers, uh, you know, and or whether it's in product development, faster time to market. Um, I, I think that, you know, we're definitely seeing more of an elevated, um, uh, realization and appreciation uh, for not just how valuable the data is, but um, you know how much gravity it holds, right? Uh, you know, customers that are realizing, hey, if I'm collecting all this data uh, in my on-prem location. Um, maybe it's not quite that feasible or sensible to ship all that data into a public cloud environment to process. Um, maybe I need to kind of uh, look at how I, how I build my hybrid strategy around data being generated here, services uh, living over here, and, and how do I bridge those two, um, uh, you know, two locations. Uh, I think you add on top of that, um, you know, newer, I would say, realization of uh, security uh, and data governance, data privacy uh, concerns. And that certainly has customers, I think, um, you know, thinking a lot more, uh, thinking a lot more intently about, um, you know, their data management, not just their data collection and data processing and an, a, analysis strategy, but their overall data management, uh, governance and, and security strategies. Yeah, we've talked a lot about security in this interesting time that we're living in. The threat landscape has changed massively. Ransomware is a household word and it's a matter of when versus if. As customers are, are looking at these challenges that they're combating, how are you helping them address those data security concerns as they know that, you know, we've got we've got this work from anywhere, this hybrid work environment that's going to persist for probably quite some time, but that security and ensuring that the data that's driving the, the revenue chain is secure and accessible, but protected no matter where it is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think um, I, I think you said it best when you said it's a matter of uh, when, not if, right? And, and, I, and I think, um, you know, we're, we're really focused on helping customers um, uh, plan for and uh, have, you know, plan for and, and have a, a very quick reaction remediation strategy, right? So, you know, customers that I, I would say historically have focused on perimeter security, have focused on preventing uh, an attack, and, and that's great, and you need to do that, but you also need to plan for, hey, if something happens, or, you know, as, as we just said, when something happens, what is your strategy for uh, remediating that? What is your strategy for getting back online very quickly? Uh, and so this is an area where, you know, we've helped uh, countless customers 
um, you know, form uh, uh, robust strategies for, um, you know, true disaster recovery from a security or ransomware sense. Um, we do this by, uh, through our safe mode um, uh, uh, features, which are available across uh, all of our, our products. And, you know, quite simply, this is uh, our capability to take um, read-only snapshots and then couple them with uh, a, a heightened level of security that effectively locks these snapshots down and takes the control of uh, these snapshots away from uh, not just customer admins, but potential uh, ransomware or malware, right? Um, you know, if you look at the most recent ransomware attacks that have uh, hit the industry, um, they've gotten more and more sophisticated where the first action a lot of these ransomware um, uh, pieces of software are taking are going after the backups. They go after the backups first and then they take down the production environment. Well, we stop that chain uh, or in the security world, world, what's called a kill chain. Uh, we stop that chain uh, right, at, right at the first step by protecting those backups in a way that um, you know, no customer admin, whether uh, it's a true admin, a malicious admin, or a piece of software, a malware that's acting as an admin, um, has the has the ability to remove that backup. And, and you know, that that's a capability that's um, actually become one of our most popular uh, and, and most uh, quickly adopted features across the portfolio. That's key. I saw that um, some was reading some reports recently about. The, the focus of ransomware on backups and the fact that you talked about it, it's becoming more sophisticated, it's also becoming more personal. So as data volumes continue to grow and companies continue to depend on data as competitive advantage differentiators and of course a source of driving revenue, ensuring that the data, the backups are protected and the ability to recover um, quickly is there is, that is table stakes, I imagine for any organization, regardless of industry. Absolutely, and and I think um, you know I think overall, if we look at just the uh, state of data protection, whether it's um, protecting against security threats or whether it's protecting against um, you know infrastructure uh, failures or or, or whatnot. Um, I would say that the state of data protection has evolved considerably over the last five years, right? You go back five, 10 years and uh, people are really fixated on, hey, how quickly can I back, you know, how quickly can I back this environment up and how can I do it in the most cost-effective uh, manner? Now, people are much more focused on, hey, when something goes wrong, whether it's a, a ransomware attack, whether it's uh, a hurricane that takes out a data center, I don't really care what it is. Uh, when, it, when something goes wrong, how quickly can I get back online? Because um, chances are, you know, every customer now is running an online service, right? Chances are you've got customers waiting for you. You've got SLAs, you've got transactions that can't complete if you don't get this environment back up. Uh, and we've seen this, uh, you know, throughout the industry over the last couple of years. And so, you know, I think um, that maturing understanding of what true data protection is, is something that um, has a driven, you know, a new approach uh, from customers to and a new focus on, on this area of their infrastructure. Uh, and B, I think it is, is also, um, you know, found a new place for, um, you know, performance and, and uh, reliability and really all of the, the properties of, um, you know, purest products uh, in, in this space. Last question, Rob, for you. Give me an example. Um, you can just mention it by industry or even by use case of, of a joint AWS peer customer where you're really helping them create a very successful uh, enterprise grade hybrid cloud environment. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, so so we've got I, we've got countless customers that that um, you know I, uh, I could point to. You know, I, I think. Um, you know, I think one that I would, uh, or one space that we're particularly successful in uh, that I would highlight are, um, you know, SaaS companies, right? So, so companies that are, um, you know, are building, um, you know, are building modern SaaS applications. Uh, and, and in one, in one particular example, I can think of is, um, you know, a gaming platform, right? So, this is a company that is uh, building out a scale-out environment. Um, you know, is uh, a very rapidly growing startup and uh, certainly is looking to AWS, looking to the public cloud environments, um, you know, as, as a, um, you know, as a great place to scale, but at the same time, um, you know, needs um, more capabilities than, um, you know, are available in the container storage for, you know, uh, infrastructure that was available in, in the public cloud environment. They need more capabilities to uh, be able to offer this global service. They need more capabilities to, um, you know, uh, um, really, 
provide the 24 by 7 by 365 uh, around the world uh, service that they have, especially dealing with um, high load bursts in different geos and, and, and just a very, very dynamic uh, global environment. Um, and so this is an area where, you know, we've been able to, um, you know, help the customer uh, with Portworks uh, be able to provide these capabilities um, by augmenting the compute that AWS or, or the cloud environment is, is able to offer, um, you know, with the, uh, the storage level um, uh, uh, replication and high availability and all of the enterprise uh, capabilities, auto scaling, performance management, um, all the capabilities that they need uh, to be able to bridge the service across uh, multiple regions, multiple environments. And, you know, potentially over time, um, you know, uh, uh, on-premise on, on premise, uh, data center locations as well. Um, so that's just one, uh, one of many examples, um, you know, but, but I think that's a, a great example where, you know, as, as customers are still Starting out, the public cloud is a great place to kind of get started. Uh, but then, as you scale, uh, whether it's uh, because of bursty load, whether it's because of uh, data volume, whether it's because of compute um, uh, volume and capacity, um, you know, customers are looking for either more capabilities, um, you know, more uh, connectivity uh, to other sites, other potentially uh, potentially other cloud environments or data center environments. Um, and that's where a more environment or cloud agnostic uh, infrastructure layer, such as Portworks, uh, is able to provide, uh, comes in uh, very handy. Got it. Rob, thanks so much for joining me on the program today at reInvent, talking about the pure AWS relationship, what's going on there, and how you're helping customers navigate in a very fast-paced, accelerating hybrid world. We appreciate you coming back on the program. Great, thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Likewise, good to see you too. For Rob Lee, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021.